So we started with the dying process. Um, you got a little science in there. Actually, probably got more science than you expected. And now we are going to um, talk about die classes and in the stages of dying. So you got the introduction to die classes uh, in that last the last slide with the affinity, but the affinity um, uh, of dying. So I, I just want to break it up um, so that you could take a little break and digest. But again, when we finish this section of the lecture, you have a couple of charts that you want to make sure that you read underneath the narrative part of the lecture. Okay. I gave you the preview of of, of die classes and make sure that you um, take a look at the chart that is underneath this narrative portion of the lecture. Um, hold on to it, commit it to memory. There will definitely be questions um, for on the exam about the die classes. So I'm just going to talk about some of the characteristics of the die class. So acid dyes usually um, provide very bright colors. Um, Premetallized acid dyes do as well, but not not as bright. So acid dyes are going to impart the most uh, the, the most color. Chrome dyes, which are also called Morton dyes, do more uh, dull colors, and they have um, you know really light um, color fast color fastness. Um, basic dyes have bright shades with good color fastness to light, so they, they're able to hold hold on to light well. Direct dyes, which are also called substantive dyes, have poor color fastness with washing. So generally these are things that are used for home, home textile, so draping and upholstery, something that basically isn't going to be washed or dry cleaned often. There are direct developed dyes, which also um, are 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 good for for home home fashion textiles. Um, you know, azoic dyes, but sometimes they're called you know insoluble or azo or ice or ingrain dyes. They also do really bright shades. They're great with deep reds and yellows. Reactive dyes are generally good um, because they have good penetration, um, but but poor color fastness for anything that's going to get in contact with with chlorine. Sulfur dyes again they do dull shades and sulfur dyes are predominantly used for navies and blacks and browns. Uh, vat dyes have again great uh, laundering and um, fastness with, uh, with uh, perspiration. And then finally those pigment dyes that we talked about it's really it's actually not a dye it's a fiber. It's a it's a, well, we talked about pigments, it just sits on top of the fabric, right? But in terms of the creation of synthetic uh, or manufactured fibers, it is used as a dye because it is in the manufacturing process, the pigment is, is used, is used in that process. So again, go through the chart. Um, like I said, committed to memory, there will be a couple of exam questions from dye classes. Let's dive into some, some different types of dye. So the first dye we're going to talk about is a fluorescent dye. And a fluorescent dye is, um, you know, one that absorbs light. Remember when we talked about color theory at the very beginning, we talked about the wavelengths, right? Um, so a fluorescent dye absorbs light uh, at one wavelength and emits it at another one. I know I said no more science. <laughs> Sorry, I lied. But... Fluorescent dyes really are used for many applications. Um, fluorescent dyes are actually used in detergents that we use and in finishing processes, um, in part because fluorescent dyes, they make whites appear whiter and they mask the yellowing of many fibers. So wool is naturally a, a, a yellowish fiber. Flax and linen is naturally a beige-ish fiber. So you put a fluorescent dye on top in order to make it white, right? Um, fluorescent dyes also are using apparel to make, you know, increase visibility at night, you know, so when we see something that has a reflective glow, they are used, um, there is a fluorescent dye used in that process. I like to highlight fluorescent dyes because essentially when we think of dyeing, we, we think of dyeing as adding color. Um, and we don't think of dyeing as adding brightness or whiteness, right? We think of 
whiteness is bleaching, but sometimes we're adding color um, in order to make something white. So next we're going to move on to stages of dyeing and dyeing can be done at any stage in the manufacturing of, of a textile product. And, you know, textiles can be dyed as fiber, as yarn, as fabric. Um, or as garments, depending on the type of fabric, the garments that's being used, and most importantly, it's in use. And descriptions of the various stages and reasons for um, the, the stages of dyeing are listed here. There is another table that is underneath this, this part of the lecture. So please um, review it and uh, make sure you have an understanding of it. Again, anytime you see a table, <laughs> there will be an exam question from a table so make sure you understand um, you understand the features and advantages the limitations disadvantages and um, I'm not going to I'm not going to test you at this point on the on the types of, 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 of fabric side but um, as we get to different types of fabrics textiles I will uh, we will be referring to this chart again Dying of fabrics is one of the focus of the movement of sustainability and environmentalism in in the fashion industry. You know, the fashion industry, the production of 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 colored fabrics and, and textiles uh, is a, a like the, we said, it's a complex process, but it's a process that uses a lot of water, uh, creates a lot of waste, and um, you know, fashion is the number two polluter behind behind uh, the oil and gas industry. So, you know, the common assumption that natural dyes are more environmentally friendly than synthetic dyes is actually not true, <laughs> right? So we think um, natural dyes, um, things that are organic, automatically mean environmentally friendly, but that's not the case with the dyeing, the dyeing of, of textiles. So, the environmental impact of natural dyes actually can be worse than that of their synthetic equivalents because in part there is a process to grow or harvest the natural the natural um, the natural pigment in dyes and then add it to add it to make it water soluble so oftentimes uh, a natural dye is actually more harmful than a synthetic dye um, in addition chemicals are required to fix natural dyes onto their fiber and some are not environmentally, environmentally friendly. So often more natural dyes are required. So more of the product of a natural dye is required than that of a synthetic dye when, when dyeing a material. And, you know, again, substantial amounts of land, energy, effort, machinery are required to grow large quantities of the plants um, that are needed to produce, um, which often is not practical as well. Um, bright colors really just can't be done in a natural manner for on a large scale without great environmental environmental damage. So really the best compromise is um, to dye using low um, low impact uh, synthetic dyes and that process uses smaller amounts of of salt, it requires uh, less water, it has shorter dyeing cycles, and it also doesn't require such high heat that many other other dyes use. So, you know, sustainability is is a growing movement in in fashion, and um, you know, like I said, the dyeing and printing when we get to printing too, um, really have um, have a significant impact on. Uh, on our on our environment and again many of these processes the the dyeing and the coloring uh, are done in emerging economies and not in a manner that is thoughtful or safe um, or you know something that can be done in the long term without great environmental damage Okay, there we have it. We have the dyeing process, right? So you got you got a little bit little bit of everything. So now you should be able to um, to explain the 
the, the dying process, the stages of dying. Um, we have a couple charts in there, so make sure that you have an understanding of the classes of dyes uh, and that you are able to explain some of the sustainability issues that come with the dying process. Okay, so uh, again, underneath this video, you have a couple charts to check out and we'll move on next to the printing process. And then as always, all the terms you need to know.